looking for a three times differentiable function f from r to r so that f is not equal to its first derivative, not equal to its second derivative, but equal to its third derivative. So in other words, it cycles after three times if we keep differentiating the function and we're going to use the complex numbers to find it out. And it's super beautiful, even though it's going to be a function from r to r, we're going to dive into the world of complex numbers. So here's going to be the trick. The trick is going to be that we are first guess, if we think about functions that are equal to their own derivative, that would give us examples of functions equal to their third derivative, but not of course the first two properties. We can look at a function like f of x equals e to the x. And I've got a very popular video on my channel where I prove that up to a constant multiple, this is the only function equal to its own derivative. Check that out. But we got f of x equals e to the x. It doesn't satisfy the properties we want because its derivative gives it back. f prime of x is also going to equal to e to the x, which doesn't satisfy the first property there. However, we can do a small trick and that's going to motivate everything from here. We can instead define a function g of x is equal to e to the cx where c is a constant. And why have I done this? Because we're going to try to find the cycling behavior after three steps. So if we differentiate g of x and look at g prime of x, it's going to be c times e to the cx by the chain rule. And if we choose the c so that c is not 1, this is not going to equal to g of x. And then similarly g double prime of x is going to equal to c squared e to the cx which will also not equal to g of x if c squared is not 1. But if we want it to cycle after three steps, we want c cubed to equal to 1. So we're looking for a number c so that c cubed is 1, but neither c nor c squared is 1. And this is where we dive into the world of complex numbers. We're looking for a cube root of 1. Okay, and this lives in the complex plane. So I'm going to assume you know that. You know what the cube root of 1 is, but I'll write it down very explicitly here. And then what we're going to do, so I'm going to erase this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use that to produce a function from r to r. Okay, so first we're going to produce a function from r to c, if you like. So here's what's that going to be. That's going to be the following. We're going to take the function f of x is equal to e to the omega x, where omega is a cube root of 1. Okay, and a cube root of 1 looks like the following. So omega looks like 1 plus i times root 3 divided by 2. That is omega, that is a cube root of 1. You can cube this in the complex plane and get 1. It's also e to the 2 pi i over 3, if you know like Euler's formula. But we're not going to use that. And also the conjugate of omega is also a cube root of 1. Okay, the conjugate of omega is 1 minus i root 3 divided by 2. That is the other non-real cube root of 1. And we're going to play around with this to find our function r to r. So we know that f of x equals e to the omega x if we take its third derivative, right? If we take its third derivative, f triple prime of x, we know by what we just saw, we know that's going to equal to omega cubed times e to the omega x, which is going to equal to e to the omega x. So it is going to equal to its third derivative, but not its first two derivatives. How do we make it into a real valued function? That's going to be a beautiful trick. We can take e to the omega x, and we can take e to the omega conjugate x and combine them. And then we can create a real valued function. So here's how we're going to do that. What I'm going to do is, instead of just taking e to the omega x, I'm going to take e to the omega x plus e to the omega conjugate x. Okay, so I'll keep omega up here just for reference sake. It's 1 plus i root 3 divided by 2. And e to the omega x is going to equal to, and as I said, I've done a video explaining that, how to discover that from scratch as early humans would have done that. So check that out. It's on my channel and title cards will appear. But you've got e to the omega x plus e to the omega conjugate x. We're going to add these two up. And what's interesting is if we add these two up, we're going to get a real function. Why is this? Well, basically e to the omega x is, a, and the conjugate of e to the omega x is e to the omega conjugate x. And we'll actually see this, okay? We're going to actually explicitly write this out. So let's work this out. So what we're going to get is e to the omega x, which is going to equal to e to the 1 plus i root 3 over 2 times x, plus e to the omega conjugate x, which is going to equal to e to the 1 minus i root 3 over 2 times x. Okay, so that's going to be what we'll have. And we're going to use Euler's formula pretty soon, okay? So pretty soon we're going to use Euler's formula. So here you can say we've got e to the half x, okay? So we can factor out an e to the half x. I'm going to do it in two steps. If you use exponent laws, it's e to the half x times e to the i root 3 over 2 x plus e to the half x times e to the minus i root 3 over 2 x, okay? And now we're getting somewhere. We're going to add up these two functions and we're going to now find, so I'm going to now erase this side of the board 
and we're going to write out and I'm going to ask you a question. Can you find all the functions in some sense that, that have this property that the derivative cycles after three steps but not one or two steps? Okay, so think about what are the functions you can get. I've added these two other, other tricks I can do to get functions from r to r but we'll see why it's a function from r to r. So here you can factor out, you get e to the half x times e to the i root 3 over 2x um, plus e to the minus i root 3 over 2x. Okay, now using Euler's formula, we know what e to the i times something is, if the something is real. We know that e to the i root 3 over 2x is equal to cosine x or cosine of, rather, cosine of root 3 over 2x, so cosine of root 3 over 2x plus i sine root 3 over 2x. Okay, so plus i sine root 3 over 2x, that's going to be Euler's formula. Now using Euler's formula, we know that e to the minus i root 3 over 2x is going to be the complex conjugate of that, okay? So you complex conjugate the exponent, you're complex conjugating the whole thing. So when you add on a number and it's complex conjugate, you get twice its real part, okay? So you can also sort of see, I can sort of write this out in a sort of quick way, e to the i root 3 over 2x is going to equal to the same thing, cosine root 3 over 2x, cosine is also an even function, so cosine of minus something is cosine of that thing. But sine is an odd function, so it's going to be sine root 3 over 2 times x. Okay, so that's going to be what we'll get. And now that you've got this file, you can add those two up as we want to do. And now we're going to get our super cool function, and it's really beautiful. It's not something that I think is necessarily that easy to come up with if you don't know the complex numbers. You know, even though it's a real function, we have to dive into the complex numbers to solve it. So here now we're going to get, we've got that. So if we write that out here, this is just going to equal to e to the half x times two times the real part, which is cosine root three over two x. So it's going to be cosine root three over two x. That's going to be our function. So that's going to be, if we can now kind of write it out, it's going to be two e to the half x times cosine of root 3 over 2x. It's a super beautiful function. It's going to equal to its third derivative because of the way we constructed it is the sum of two functions that equal their third derivative, but it's not going to equal to its first or second derivatives. Let's prove that quickly, why it's not equal to its second or first derivatives. And at the same time, as I said, I want you to think about why or what other kinds of functions you can come up with from r to r and it's beautiful that we're solving in some sense what is called a differential equation you know y triple prime is y but with some conditions and that is actually sort of like solving an algebraic equation okay so this motivates a lot of theory of general uh, ODEs in some sense okay so why is this not equal to its first or second derivative so here's why the function originally was e to the omega x plus e to the minus omega or e to the omega conjugate x that's what our function was equal to. And if you take its um, you know, first derivative, you're going to get f prime of x is going to equal to omega e to the omega x um, plus omega conjugate, okay? So plus omega conjugate um, times e to the omega conjugate x, okay? That was what its um, first derivative is going to be. Its second derivative is just going to be f double prime of x is going to equal to omega squared e to the omega x plus omega conjugate squared e to the omega conjugate x. Okay, so why are these two functions not equal to f of x? That's what we have to figure out. So that's a quick kind of calculation, okay? So we can kind of do that. All right, so if we just set them equal to each other, I'm just going to explain the first derivative and I want you to drop a comment down below why it's not equal to its second derivative. But if we just expand it out, saying that f of x is equal to f prime of x is just going to be the same as saying that e to the omega x plus e to the omega conjugate x is going to equal to omega e to the omega x um, plus omega conjugate e to the omega conjugate x, okay? So in the language of linear algebra, we say these are actually like independent functions in some sense, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain this like very concretely here. So you can sort of put all the like terms to one side. So put the e to the omega x on one side, we get e to the omega x times one minus omega is going to equal to e to the omega conjugate x times omega conjugate minus one. So therefore, if you kind of now bring all the exponents to one side, the e to the stuff on one side, we're going to get divide by e to the omega conjugate x, we're going to get e to the um, x times omega minus omega conjugate is going to equal to omega conjugate minus one divided by one minus omega. Now you can see that actually this cannot be a constant function. 
Okay, so we're saying this is a constant function which cannot be the case. You can find an x so that this is not equal. What's that x going to be? I want you to drop a comment down below. And also do the same argument to explain why f double prime of x is not equal to f of x. That concludes the video. We've got a function from r to r which is now erased. Super cool function. Can you come up with that without doing this argument? Do you have other ways of coming up with a function that cycles after three derivatives? Drop a comment down below and tell me what all the functions are. Okay, proving that they are all the functions may be hard. But what do you think, how can you categorically describe all the functions that are equal to their third derivative but not their first two? And don't forget to check out my video on why e to the x is the only function equal to its own derivative up to multiplication by a constant. So either e to the x or multiples of e to the x. I've got videos on my channel at all levels of math. Don't forget to check it out and subscribe for constant exposure to all sorts of cool math ideas. I'm always thinking about math. I'm a research mathematician. I think about all kinds of weird ideas and do videos on them as well as standard math to give you the foundations you need to master high school and college math. Okay, so there's something for everyone and I'm super excited to see you in the next video.